Hello everyone and welcome back to another movie review. Today I'm going to be starting my next big project. As some of you may know, Avengers Endgame recently got a trailer, I think it was yesterday. Um, and it's amazing, it hyped me up, I thought it was great, and that really let me to think about, especially because the trailer was so focused on flashbacks, I was thinking about re-watching all of the uh, MCU movies leading up to Endgame because it's sort of an end of an era. It's 11 years in the making, all of the end of the characters' arcs. My new plan is to go through and watch all of them and hopefully review all of them before Endgame comes out. So probably nothing but MCU movies for the next month and a half as I work my way through it probably three or four a week. So setting a deadline for myself is going to help me get through all of this in a timely manner and sort of feel the pressure because I am personally not very great at keeping up with things. As you can tell, I just sort of drop out of making reviews for periods of time. So hopefully this will keep me consistent at least for the next month and then Endgame comes out and we can see where I go from there. But to start things off, I'm going to be reviewing the first MCU movie, Iron Man, which I did review a while ago, almost a year ago, I think it is now. That's one of my least favorite reviews that I've ever done. It was only five minutes long, and I'm going to be completely honest, I did not watch the movie before I made that review. I just wanted to start Marvel Movie Mondays, and it didn't click. I just started it, and a cat walked through. It was an awful review. I would say, don't watch that one, watch this one. This is going to be the better one, I promise you, because I actually have notes. And I actually have seen the movie in the last 24 hours. So, um, let's just start off. Uh, so, Iron Man follows the story of a young man named Tony Stark, who is a billionaire, he's a scientist, he's kind of a jackass, to be honest. And he is now the head of a weapons manufacturing company. And he is testing his new weapons, he's high and mighty because he has been rich for his whole life and he has developed this sense of superiority and he's showing off his weapons and one day an experiment when they're in the Middle East goes wrong. He is hit by one of his own weapons. He wakes up in a terrorist cave and they tell him to make them a missile in a cave with one other guy whose name is Jensen. And from the accident being hit by his own weapon, he had shrapnel lodged in his chest and he has to have a thing implanted called an arc reactor which is basically an electromagnet that pushes away the shrapnel that's in his bloodstream going towards his heart because if it got to his heart he would die. So he has this magnet in his chest which is a very cool piece of character design in my opinion. Obviously the character of Iron Man has been around for longer than my parents have been alive so it's not anything new but I just think it's a really cool piece of character development and character design to have the art reactor in his chest. He ends up building a suit with flamethrowers and jet boots out of what they make in the cave because the terrorists don't really know what's going on. So he makes a suit, he makes his escape, he ends up back in America, and he realizes that being a weapons manufacturing company is not the way to go. He realizes what he's done, he's seen the people that he's hurt, he's seen what his weapons have caused, and he's had a change of heart. So he kills off the weapons development portion of Stark Industries, which is what his company is called. He ends up making a better version of the suit and becoming the superhero we now know as Iron Man. I kind of told the whole story, but there's not very much spoilers to be had. The villain he does face in this is named Obadiah Stane, who is sort of his mentor and father figure since his father died. Oh my god. Wow, okay, I'm very sorry about that. And Stain is also one of the heads of the company. They have tension, they've known each other for forever, and that is basically it for the story summary. I'm ready to get into my points. I'm gonna start off with the negatives, of which there are really only two. They kind of overuse shaky cam, especially in the early action sequences in the Middle East, and it kind of sickened me a little bit. It made that sequence not very enjoyable. It was still very intense and interesting, but I didn't really like watching it. But this was an independently made film. Marvel, this is Marvel Studios' first film, and they were kind of low on budget, and John Favreau was trying to make it action-y and flashy. So I can understand that, but I personally didn't enjoy it. And also, to be honest, Obadiah Stain isn't the greatest villain. The concept of the personal connection that Tony has to Obadiah and their history and the conflict between them of Obadiah wanting the weapons industry to continue and Tony being the actual head of the company, realizing what has happened... Um, and they also think that he's really just closed down the weapons part because of PTSD, or the board of directors does, so there's a conflict there. I think that's a really interesting concept, but I don't think it's handled very well, especially because Obadiah Stane has some pretty crappy dialogue. He's pretty generic in most scenes, and his motives are meh. 
Um, he's kind of just evil for the sake of making money, and he doesn't really have a backstory or anything like that. If they had given, given him more backstory, if they had showed more connection between him and Tony when Tony was younger, or the connection between Obadiah and Tony's father, Howard, I think he would have been one of the best villains in the MCU. He's still a pretty good villain. The actor who, I can't remember, he did a great job with what he was given, but the writing for him wasn't great, and he wasn't given enough development. Now, here's one of my biggest points about this movie. It's not something that's actually great about the movie itself, but it's something that really impacts me, is that I wish that I had seen this movie when it came out. I was eight when it came out, so that wasn't feasible. My parents did not have let me see it in theaters. But as someone who's a comic book fan, and knowing how the MCU has progressed, especially Iron Man as a character, who is basically the forefront of the last 10 or 11 years now of these superhero movies, is he was a pretty unknown character to, to the masses before this movie. And for me, who I've grown up in basically an era where Iron Man is right up there with Spider-Man and Captain America as the faces of the superhero industry and just pop culture in general, so I really would have loved to have seen this when it came out and seen how people reacted to it, especially because the, his story wasn't as well known. And I was just thinking about that the entire time I was watching the movie is, God, I really wish that I had seen this without any context. Because I've known Iron Man my whole life, and so this story just sort of feels like it slides right into place. But it was probably a lot more interesting and unique to people who didn't know anything about the character. So if you haven't seen the movie or don't know anything about superheroes or Iron Man in general, I would say go see this movie, especially because it's a very unique concept for a movie with the genius guy going through a change of heart from a terrible accident, using his powers for good, but he's still kind of a jackass. It's a really interesting story. I'm going to start off with my filmmaking positives for this movie, is that I really enjoyed the editing. They sort of end scenes halfway through, uh, or right at the end of a sentence, and cut right to something that sentence is related to. They do this quite a number of times, and it's really great for comedic effect, which is what a lot of this movie is played towards because Tony Stark is kind of just a jokey guy. He's always making quips and jokes because he's an asshole. He really is. I really enjoyed that. It, I think it works really well. Um, and also because the dialogue in this movie is so unique, and most of it I think is improvised actually, which I only heard the other day, but if that's true, it's impressive because all the lines are so uniquely paced and so uniquely delivered that it makes almost all of them memorable. Like you can go through, watch each scene and pull one or two from each one of just impressive, funny, entertaining dialogue. And I gotta give props to the writer who I don't know who it was. If it was John Favreau, he did a great job. That's really the only name for the production I know of this movie. But anyway, I also really enjoyed the special effects and the practical effects in this movie. The Mark II suit, which is the red and gold one that he eventually builds after getting out of the cave, is still my favorite Iron Man suit to this day. It's the most classic one to me, especially when they're doing sort of close-ups and pan-arounds of it, um, and there's gears popping and parts moving in and out. And It's just fun to watch. It's interesting. It's very well done. The special effects on that and him flying and shooting repulsor blasts and all that worked really well to this day. The work they've done on the uh, practical effects for the suit and the special effects for the um, action are really, really impressive. One more thing about the action in this movie is there isn't very much of it compared to the superhero movies we see today where most of it is characters fighting the bad guys or fighting each other or whatever it is. This is a pretty low on the amount of, of action that they have, but they do manage to keep the action character focused by introducing a really unique concept, which is the heads up display inside of Tony's helmet with his AI Jarvis. But you're always up close to his face. You see his reactions to getting hit, to being ecstatic when he triumphs, and it keeps the action character focused, which is something you don't usually see in, in big budget action movies. Now for the story. One of my favorite parts of this story is the background of the morals and the conflict that really is happening inside of uh, Tony himself and with uh, Obadiah. It's just really interesting to me. There's the conflict between his responsibility to his company, to him being a figurehead of the weapons industry. He has responsibility to those, but he also feels like he needs to live up to the legacy of his father. But he also wants to rebel. He wants to develop his own future, his own path, and really follow what he believes is right, which after he goes through the um, accident in the cave in the Middle East, it changes him, and it's a unique dynamic between the, with the conflict that they have. And speaking of the terrorist scenes, the caves in the Middle East, I think they spent the perfect amount of time on those. They give you a lot of time in the caves of 
Tony sort of just working, him building a relationship with this guy, Jensen, who we don't really get a backstory for. So when they do escape and Jensen, spoilers, doesn't make it, um, it really does feel pretty powerful because he's gone through this and you had to go through, what it, maybe it's 30 minutes of the movie with him sort of struggling in the caves. And I thought that was great. Also, this is something that I personally enjoyed because my favorite aspect of the MCU is the fact that everything is connected, is they really do set up for the future really well without drawing away from the story at all. If you had watched this movie before knowing there was going to be sequels, before you knew there was going to be Avengers or Captain America or Thor or anything, you wouldn't have really noticed that they were setting up. But they have a good amount of Coulson. I think this is actually the most that Coulson is in any of the movies. They have a good amount of him. He sets up S.H.I.E.L.D. They set up War Machine. And obviously at the end, with the end credits, they have Nick Fury come in and talk about the Avengers initiative. Which, if you hadn't known that there was anything was going to happen, it would have just felt like, oh, they're um, talking about this world and we don't really know what's going on. But now that there's more context, it's really well integrated how they set up for future things and the connections that they have. Finally, I'm gonna talk about the acting, which is probably the best aspect of this movie. Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark is probably the single greatest actor to character of the last decade. He's been doing this for 11 years and he will be, haven't even seen the end of him because he has another uh, movie that he's in coming out next month. And he fits the role so well. His dialogue, his pacing, his facial expressions are incredible. He just plays the role. He's really playing himself because he is really Tony Stark, and I've obviously associated him with Tony Stark my entire life. It's just so impressive, and he's one of the greatest performances of a single character that I can think of, especially in the last decade. Also, the chemistry between him and Gwyneth Paltrow, who plays his secretary slash love interest, Pepper Potts, is amazing. I really love their comedy together. She plays it pretty straight and sort of awkward because she's trying to keep up with him because he's quite a bit more hard-headed than her. So their dynamic is really fun to watch. I think she did a great job. She's great as Pepper in the other movies as well, but in this one, especially because she's not quite the love interest yet for most of the movie, their dynamic is really fun to watch and I think it worked incredibly well. So that's a lot of gushing about this movie. I really, really enjoyed it, clearly. This is probably my third or fourth time seeing it in my lifetime, maybe even more than that, but it's really a great movie and it deserves all the acclaim it's gotten. It started my personal favorite series of movies of all time and created one of the greatest characters of the last decade, or movie characters at least. I give this movie a 9 out of 10 or a 4.5 stars out of 5 stars. I really highly recommend it. It's not solely action-based. There's a lot of character development. So if you aren't quite into action, you might still enjoy it. So thank you for watching, guys. I hope to see you again very soon with The Incredible Hulk, which I think is the next MCU movie that I'll be reviewing. See you guys in another video.